with Willa. I am your host, Willa White. This is my weekly podcast show that airs on Wednesday mornings at 10 a.m. Eastern on my Facebook page, Willa White Medium. It's an opportunity for us to discuss a special topic relating to either spiritualism, mediumship, healing, faith, family, or more. I also usually have a guest on the show, and it's wonderful the education that comes through in these moments that we share together. I'm always fascinated with the direction that the conversation flows organically, and I hope that you can enjoy it too. Another way you can tune into the show would be on blogtalkradio.com slash Lilydale Radio. I'm part of the Lilydale Radio family, and that means there are other shows that happen throughout the week. That That's a listen-only feature one, uh, but you can tune into the other shows that happen in that way. Um, this also go on to the Lilydale Assembly Facebook page, as well as my YouTube channel. So lots of places that you can tune into the show uh, for whatever's right for you. And you can watch the replay of it later if you can't catch us live. Now, uh, I have a couple more announcements real quickly. I do have my Auras class, Understanding Your Aura. Uh, that will be happening this Saturday at one o'clock on Zoom. And it's gonna be a great play, time and place for you to explore your aura and understand the layers, colors associated with it, and start to understand to, how to do an aura reading. You can find more about that uh, class on my website, willowwhite.com, and you can sign up for that. Hope you can join us. It has a whole package with it that'll come with a, a, a downloadable handout and a downloadable audio exercise that you can keep for after the class. All right, so without further ado, I would like to introduce our uh, topic, which is spirit contact with instrumental transcommunication. And that is made possible because we have the lovely Shannon Taggart with us today. Hello, Shannon. Hi, Willa. <laughs> Thanks for having me back. Yes, Shannon has been a delightful guest. And you can look at the archive videos of the show. She's come on to talk about uh, various spiritualism topics. Uh, she is a spirit photographer, and she's been able to uh, take part in a lot of different physical mediumship events and been able to capture those with her good eye and uh, with her photography skills. And she's also a facilit the, the facilitator, I should say, of the Lilydale Summer Symposium, which is an array of lecture events that people can really start to see where science and spiritualism merge and uh, definitely have scholars from around the world that take part in that. So we'll talk a little bit more about that uh, later on, but she's also the author of the book Seance. And I have my copy <laughs> with me. So I just thought I'd show you this is the, the book Seance that Shannon Taggart wrote. Yes. And um, it's coming out in a new edition. Uh, uh, so it's a, it's slightly different. It's got yeah, it a, a different, it's actually the same size, but it's a different format. And there's an extra essay and some new pictures in the new edition. And mm -hmm. that is available for pre-order right now. It's shipping in December. Yeah, so you can visit shannontaggart.com and uh, get your information about that. She's got fantastic photos in here of various um, uh, events that she's attended and things having to do with spirit art. So if you want to be in the know about those things and have amazing photos uh, to look at, this is a very valuable book. And the foreword was written by Dan Aykroyd. Of all yes. people, the the man, the man himself from Ghostbusters. So, uh, yeah, a lot of of uh, wonderful uh, compilation of photographs and information is in that book. Thank so you. So, thank you for producing that for us, Shannon. Thanks. Yeah, <laughs> so, and go ahead. Well, I was going to say that's I'm drawing the idea for instrumental transcommunication from the book because I do talk about that in the book. Wonderful. Yeah, so we're going to go into a deep dive on our topic and hope you guys enjoy it. Again, if you just joined us, this is Shannon Taggart, who is my special guest on the show today. And you can look back in the archive videos on Willow White Medium and also on my YouTube channel. If you want to type in Shannon Taggart, you'll be able to find uh, when she's been a guest on the show before. So let's go ahead and go into our topic, uh, which is instrumental transcommunication 
Um, also, the acronym of that would be ITC. And a lot of people don't know what that is. So what is that, Shannon? Well, instrumental transcommunication is when you, you combine mediumship with cameras, video, audio recorders, uh, any type of technology in order to amplify um, the communication or have different forms of communication. And it's not specifically spiritualist. Uh, there's been many practitioners who don't consider themselves spiritualists. Um, one of the most famous uh, practitioners is actually, actually a spiritist in Brazil uh, named Sonia Rinaldi. And she does wonderful work. She's a fascinating person. There's a actually a documentary about her life out um, on the internet uh, you can find. Um, but you know, this encompasses things like EVP and orb photography and um, things people may have heard about. I, I would put it all under this ITC umbrella, uh, which is, you know, combining mediumship and um, the, you know, talking to spirits. It also kind of touches on that uh, paranormal investigation, you know, and I know there's a lot of a lot of paranormal investigators are not spiritualists. Some are. There's a lot of, as with anything, you know, spiritualists are free thinkers and there's spiritualists who are pro, you know, rescue seances or paranormal investigation and those who aren't. So, you know, it's all um, trying to unpack all of this gets complicated. But I find that there are many spiritualists experimenting with technology, and I find that fascinating being a professional photographer. And it was one of the, the discovering that ITC existed, because, you know, of course, I did not learn about it in art school. It, it's something that is kind of kept in the specialist literature, or, you know, if it's it's not like broadly talked about in uh, when you're learning about technology and art. Um, so. Uh, you know, it's one of the things that drew me back into my project because I had taken a break uh, photographing spiritualism because I was frustrated. How do you photograph invisible things? You know, it took me a long time to figure that out. Sure. And it's it, it's definitely shown through the years in, in your photography, the, the efforts you've gone to to make this authentic and uh, to really show not just uh, what can be accomplished in the magic behind the scenes, but like what is true, not, not just uh, photography that can be manipulated. This has to be photography that is the true blue uh, spirit showing up with us and manifesting in physical phenomenon. Yeah, I tried to um, explore all aspects of spirit photography in the book. Mm -hmm. And, you know, learning about spirit photography is what led me to discover ITC. Mm -hmm. And um, and also I met, so I started meeting practitioners um, like uh, my friend Donna Hogan Sinclair, or Donna Sinclair Hogan, sorry, I always switch those around. She is an EVP practitioner who I uh, she started because she received a voicemail from her deceased brother-in-law that was dated, that was timestamped three days after his death. And this led her down the EVP route. And then um, she started, uh, then she found spiritualism and mediumship. And so it combined, the technology brought her into that. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, orb photography. Uh, I've met a lot of orb photographers and a lot of the orb photographers I met are, um, many of them are grieving mothers seeking to communicate with their deceased children. And that is really the, the crux of the orb photography community. It was kind of spearheaded on the internet. And now that we have the internet, this ITC practice is kind of exploding because when I began my project, it was 2001. So there wasn't much exchange about this information. Mm -hmm. So so let's unpack that a little bit. When it comes to EVP, electronic voice phenomenon, that usually is occurring because spirit's able to use the electricity or that 
uh, technology device to be able to produce that. It is difficult for spirit in some ways to do any of those things because they don't have a physical body. And so they have to be utilizing energy to make that possible. And I remember, because I've been a medium so long now, that I first started out with using cassette tapes to record sessions. And people would get them home and pop them in at uh, home. And then they would call me and they'd say like, oh, oh my goodness, I, I heard my dad speaking on, on the tape. Uh, or they'll talk, they'll say they heard their mom. And, and it's just very interesting that they, they can actually hear sometimes the voices that would show up. Now, after I, I went to CD, to digital format, that didn't show up as much. It didn't, uh, they didn't, uh, uh, show up because they didn't have the white noise that was associated with mm -hmm. using those cassette tapes, right? But they yeah. can utilize the digital world. It's just, I think, a little easier when they have the white noise, wouldn't you say, Shannon? Yeah, yeah. And there's a lot of theories about um, the best way to record. And also, a lot of EVP practitioners will talk about how the the sound will change over time or mm -hmm. you have to back it up because it will disappear. And um, I'm not sure what they call that phenomenon, but uh, you know, like that, that actually it may develop over time, it may disappear over time. And that's like an aspect of this type of phenomena. Right, that it almost uh, holds, it's kind of like with spirit art. And my mom who's a spirit artist, uh, people will tell her and they put it under glass. They really appreciate the, the the spirit drawings and spirit paintings they put them on a glass so there's nobody that can be smearing things or changing things and they'll say look this is different they'll have a before picture and an after picture sometimes it's a couple months or a couple years later that things have changed and other things have emerged from it so it is uh fascinating how that can be altered and you know, you're, you're left with, after you've ruled the scientific parts of it out, left with spirit. And yeah. I, I think that's a good rule of thumb. Like if you scientifically ruled out, there's no reason that this should be appearing or that I should be hearing this, then you're left with spirit. Yeah, so that's, yeah, that's part of um, kind of the, the belief around this type of phenomena. And um, yeah, like, now in the digital age, you know, there are mediums online who are using thermal cameras, you know, they're documenting their own trans sessions with heat sensitive cameras and trying to track temperature changes with it. Um, there's a lot of mediums online that are, there's this thing, a few mediums are doing where they're using their eyeglasses and they're photographing their eyeglasses and kind of showing spirits in the eyeglasses. Um, oh. I don't know what they call it. It's sort of like type of a scrying, uh, you know, and they, they'll they show right over their eye with the eyeglasses. Um, so I'm kind of fascinated with how creative um, people have, mediums have been with using technology and finding um, signs and messages. Um, and then great. that's showing up on spirit photography when they take pictures of the glasses. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, they take the people... pictures of the glasses and they see um, they they see spirit, and then they'll put they'll pair it, they'll post them and see if anybody recognizes them. And then if somebody sends the picture back, they'll put the picture right next to mm -hmm. to that. And I so it hasn't been documented in terms of during a reading that is happening to their glasses. No, no, it's okay. usually medium sitting for it. Right. And so, um, yeah. And so they're they're sitting um, and they're welcoming spirit in and then spirit is showing up somehow in the light or the glare, or the glaze. Yeah, the glasses. Temporarily I mean, on the glasses. It, as, as a photographer, it's kind of astounding to me how they're doing these very technical images with their iPhone. They must, but you know, you can find them online and people are doing them mm -hmm. and it's yeah. really, yeah. And I think um, as far as ITC and spiritualism, the overlap of those two things, I believe that when they started to really come together was in the 90s there was uh, this group called the Skoll Experiment that was active in England in the mid to late 1990s. Yes. And they were using 
all sorts of technology. They were having these um, seances in England and it was considered some of the best evidence of afterlife communication uh, by many of the people who were studying them. They were studied by the Society for Psychical Research. There was books and papers. There's gonna be a movie about them coming out soon. Um, they got airports, but they were also received messages on photographic film. They had this, they were in touch with the Polaroid company and a polar, somebody from the Polaroid company gave them an instamatic um, film processor so, so they could process film right there without using a lab. They also created this video system and it, they called it Project Alice after, you know, Alice in Wonderland, where they Put, took two video cameras and they pointed them kind of like a like a, a white noise screen, you know, kind of like like a feedback loop. Mm -hmm. And um, they got images that they said from were from other worlds. There was um, what they, they said they had alien contact through that. So those the skull experiment um, was part of the part of the reason physical mediumship uh, came back because one of the founders, Robin Foy, founded this society called the Noah's Ark Society in England. And he was trying to bring back that form of mediumship. And then he started the skull experiment and then kind of the technology experimentation really exploded. And, um, you know, in, in England, there's a lot, um, I found there's like a lot of, um, there's more spiritualist churches there than in the US. Um, I don't know why. I know spiritualism was born in America, but it, it seems to be a little more uh, intact in the country of England. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they do have, a, uh, you know, for the space that the little space that they have compared to the United States, they yeah. absolutely do have more uh, spiritualist churches per square mile, if you will. Yeah. And, so it's it's fascinating to me that people have been able to to sit for this. There's a lot of patience that is involved with taking on physical mediumship and a dedicated group that is going to sit whether they get that phenomenon or not. And it's not always about uh, did was that a success that day or what, there's a building of energy that happens. I mean, for the school experiment, they they sat for years to make this uh, and the balancing of the energy between them. Yes, and they and they were also trying to develop a new form of energy to use for physical mediumship. They called it energy based rather than ectoplasmic based. Nice. And they felt that this was safer. So um, a lot of times, or they had a dome in their seance room. So sometimes. In my book, I documented some people who use domes and that comes from um, the skull group where they said the energy was coming into this dome and that's, you know, rather than ectoplasmic mediumship, which is supposed to emanate from the medium's body mm -hmm. and is said to be very dangerous and can only be done in complete darkness. So there was a lot of um, new theories too that skull was developing about like how physical mediumship could be done. And, you know, there's always a lot of debate about the topic of physical mediumship and oh, yeah. whether it's of the past or should be of the future or whether we need it anymore or not. So one of the goals of Skoll was to kind of move that type of mediumship forward. Mm -hmm. And I, I know they're, they're do, they do have a lot of credible people that have signed off on those, on, on the information that came through in those those experiments yeah as well. yeah there was so. um he, the, um several of the esteemed members of the society for psychical research uh published articles about how they felt everything there was absolutely genuine mm -hmm. i actually met somebody who had sat with skull I, I i had met robin foy and his wife sandra too he's recently passed away um, and I was able to photograph some of the apports that the skull experiment received. And those are in the book and documented. Um, and also a device that they built that they said the spirit of Thomas Edison gave them the plans and the ideas for called the trans commun trans-dimensional communication device. So it's a device that they used, uh, they built via plans from Thomas Edison and they used it and they hooked it up to a tape recorder and they said that they 
tape recorded his voice. Mm -hmm. And right now, um, actually, the ar there's an archivist for the Skull Experiment, and they're working hard to put all of their seance tapes up online. So if anybody has a real interest to do a deep dive into some of their material, they're building that site right now. Beautiful. And is that something that people, is it accessible for viewing or listening right now? I'm not, I think some of it is up online. Um, and how, think, what's the, do you know hmm, that the website would be for that? At the Skull Experiment, uh, I can, um, I don't know if I should, should I look for it now and post it? somehow well you can let me know later and I can yeah post it too. yeah It'll we can post fine. it I know they're working hard on it though um and that the a movie's coming out soon which is very very exciting we hope it's well done and not just Hollywooded <laughs> because yeah it, it's has... it is it is such a fascinating story and um Robin Foy actually wrote a book about it's a very big book called witnessing the impossible and mm. it's it's a fully detailed um, log of everything that happened with that group. Wow, just beautiful. It, you know, we, ha we have to uh, be willing to expand our consciousness and our minds to uh, be open and receptive to this kind of information and, and to, of course, put it through our own little uh, filters with, of understanding. But it's good that people know that there's this expansiveness that is going on. Uh, so the spirit communication is definitely not something that is lost and gone, gone by the wayside. This is something that is continually developing and people are coming up with new and wonderful ideas and plans to, to make that more successful. Yes. And, I, and I, uh, oh, go ahead. But I, and also spiritualist history has always had, it's always been tied to technology and technological innovation mm -hmm. and um so this type of experimentation has been embedded in spiritualism since the beginning yes the, if you look at the history the history of spiritualism and how especially during the 1800s 1900s the experiments that that scientists did to show the evidence of spirit and uh, Shannon, you know, she's had some great presenters, as I said, for the Lilydale Summer Symposium that have gone more in depth about some of these topics that we're, we're discussing yeah. today. Yeah, this past summer, just for example, there was a, there's some new scholarship happening in relation to spiritualism and technology. And one of those presenters, Emma Merkling, was talking about uh, the connection between the William Crookes tube and spiritualism, because William Crooks, we might not remember his name so much now, but he was one of the most esteemed scientists of the late 19th century. And he developed the Crooks to, he studied spiritualism for 30 years. He investigated seances. He was the first person to photograph a spirit, spirit materialization. He also developed a piece of technology called the Crooks tube, which led to the invention of the x-ray and the television. Yes. So um, I'd like to point out one of the reasons I do the summer program is to point out that spiritualism has such a absolutely fascinating history that ties to art, science, and technology. And a lot of this has been written out of history books or forgotten. But basically, wherever you find 19th century innovation, you also find spiritualism in, in multiple disciplines. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It, it's excellent point. And it's it's something that Shannon does such a wonderful job of of curating the uh lectures that are that come for the summer. And we can't thank you enough for doing that and pursuing um the science and the art and bringing people together so that they can really have deeper conversations about these things. Now, another aspect in terms of the the voice phenomenon. Uh, we, I've even heard that people are, are trying to develop a phone to spirit, which yes. would be <laughs> yes. along so, the lines of ITC. Yeah. Supposedly, Thomas Edison was for, spent the last 10 years of his life working on a phone to talk to the other side. Um, yeah, and I think there was one called Spiritcom. I think I've heard that too. People were working on, and there's a, so there's a lot of uh, technological experiments, and also 
you know, when the, when the phone first came out, you know, people, this disembodied voice being able to hear it, it was like, what else can we contact? What, what else can travel through such, uh, you know, through electricity and through technology? Yes. So many clients over the years have shared stories with me of, uh, like you mentioned earlier, the lady with the cell phone message that she received a couple, a few days after a, a loved one had passed. Uh, other people have had had actual calls from their loved one who passed that they can see the number ringing through to them. Wow. And there's no reason for that to happen. Some of them have received text messages after the fact, even though they are the only ones in possession of that phone. Wow. Yeah. And this ties into ideas about electricity and spirituality, which is something I've been fascinated with. I mean, just this past year at the symposium, you know, we had Leonard George speak about a uh, lightning in the divine yeah. and, um, there was a there's a medium named Elizabeth Crone who she's a recent person who's um, written a book about how she was struck by lightning and then became a medium because of that. And I find her interviews in her book fascinating um, because she was never a medium before. She was never thought anything like that would ever happen to her. Completely being electrified completely changed her life. And one of her stories. She talks about her phone ringing in the middle of the night and her hearing her grandfather on the on the line mm -hmm. and um, that she felt. I think somebody asked her, oh, well, do you think if somebody else had picked up the phone, they would have heard the voice, too? And she thought maybe um, because she had been electrocuted that she had a special sensitivity to hear it. Right. And I do notice with EVP practitioners, a lot of times some people can hear it and some people can't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's also with spirit photography it's like some people see things in pictures others don't see especially with orb photography they're zooming in and they're trying to see faces or decode messages or letters and some people really can see it and other people can't some be, I mean and even the way we use technology just you see how different photographers can use the same camera and come up with very different images there's consciousness is involved in all of this as well. And even if you're taking out the whole um, talking to the spirit world, I do think uh, when we use technology, we embed our consciousness into it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, maybe that's part of how other communications come in. I don't know. It's a mystery, but you have your mind interacting with electricity, intending Mm -hmm. um to record and it's it's just really fascinating when you think of it um we're so used to you know we have our phones now and technology is everywhere it's a big part of our practical life and i think sometimes we forget how um how metaphysical it actually is it, it can be absolutely let's let's lean in for people who don't understand about what orb photography is so that they can have a better grasp of this. When we're talking about ores, we're talking about energy. A lot of times it'll manifest like a, like a sphere of light. And this is different from a dust particle on the lens of the camera or uh, a, light, a light flare or a glare. That there are distinctions of this. And there are also manifestations where you can actually see a loved one's face it kind of takes on a color or almost a hologram effect a lot of the time, correct? Yeah, so orb photography is, it's kind of evolved into the digital age. And I would I would say it's the spirit photography of today. It's the most popular form of spirit photography. And there's been a lot of books and analyze, analyze, analysis about what are orbs? Is it just water? Is it just um, dust particles? Is it just camera glitches? Um, there are physicists who claim they could even get orbs in uh, clean rooms, and they tried to debunk all of the other possibilities. Um, and they've they've written a book. I think it's called Orbs Among Us. But the point when people are working with orbs, the point isn't. It's besides the point. What is at what it is? The point of an orb is to interact with it. 
So there's this technique called orb calling where you take your digital camera and people do this at the stump. Um, Teresa, Teresa Schaefer has a absolutely amazing orb photography class that I've taken in Lilydale. And you'll go out to the stump and you'll ask the orbs to appear. I have a picture of Teresa, like she, she's just putting her hand out and get it. So you're, you're, you're asking it to interact consciously, to show its intelligence, to show it's there. You'll see a lot of times if you look up orb photography online, they'll start in a blank room and they'll just keep asking for orbs. And by the end of the photo series, the whole room will be filled with orbs. Um, I find that part fascinating. I know in, you know, tech, technology wise, you know, you can get orbs from glare or, you know, bugs or, um, you know, water, but there's something really fascinating about these practitioners who are over and over and over again, commanding orbs into patterns, asking them to appear, fill up a room. And, and there's one picture in my book where, uh, and I have a digital camera, but it has a very large sensor. It's a professional camera. And one of the theories about orbs is that you're more apt to get orbs on cameras with a smaller chip. Mm. It, uh, so that's one of the theories why we have, why it's more common with small digital cameras. So I was with these orb photographers in Italy and I, they said, come on, we're going to go do some orb photography. And I said, well, you know, I'll go and I'll bring my camera, but I'm not going to get any orbs because I never get orbs, uh, um, but I'm going to go and like take pictures. And they said, oh no, if we go out into the woods and we were in the mountains um, where, uh, you know, there was some sacred area. And they said, if we go into these mountains and we say our prayers, you will get orbs. And so we went into the mountains we said the prayers and right after they said the prayers, I took a picture and I did get orbs. I got orb upon orb upon orb. Every, every millimeter of this file, I, this photo file is full of orbs and it wasn't a dust storm and it wasn't water and it wasn't a bug storm. And so to this day, I still am unclear how I got all of those orbs. And it's one of the only orb photographs I've ever made. I think that's interesting that you say to this day, I'm still unclear how, and yet you just told us how you did it. <laughs> well, I know, but I am always that I am always open to, I guess I am, I'm a proper, some people have told me that good spiritualists are always skeptical, you yeah, know, like they're always, skeptic. so I, sure. I'm, I'm always open to like, maybe there was something I didn't consider there, but it was, you know, I always leave that, um, that door open for other possibilities. But I mean, to me, it was really astounding. And it was the, this, it was very, um, just one of the most astounding experiences I've had doing photography, really during this this project because it's it's undeniable that there are orbs over every every part it's of that undeniable that they, yes. so, so this is a fascinating thing and I just think it, it's worth a mention people can have spirit experience experiences and then they can try to talk themselves out of it they can try to yes. deconstruct what happened so they can take something that was profound and beautiful and they can uh, keep all the cynicism they want onto that and really try to poke as many holes. And that can be useful sometimes in our lives, but it can really deconstruct that sacred connection. So I, I want to encourage people that, yes, we, you know, being healthy skeptic is important, but also not denying your experiences that you might be having with uh, electronic voice phenomenon, with word photography, with, with this, with instrumental trans communication um, and also what you might be experiencing on um, a mental mediumship level as well this is for all mediumship to keep in mind of uh, the balance between science and spirit yes and I, I actually saw a lot of what you're what you're saying about um in Lilydale over the the past few summers I don't know if you're aware of this at all, but a lot of people have been going down on the fairy trail and saying that they're seeing fairies and photographing fairies. And I have friends who saw different colored fairies. It wasn't um, 
firefly colors. It was, you know, different. Uh, I think it was, I, I'm not sure exactly what color, maybe blue or purple. And, um, and they were whistling and the fairies were whistling back. Like, and then, you know, bands of people going out together. This is, this has been probably the past five years in Lilydale. I've noticed there's been a lot of this type of experimentation. And then some people come back like, I can't believe what just happened. And then the next day they're like, well, no, it must have been this. It must have been that. So I, I've seen that really dramatically happen with the fairy trail stuff. So yeah. I know that in Lilydale, there's a lot of orb photography going around around the stump. And then a lot of this other experimental photography happening on the fairy trail. Mm -hmm. And um, I did see some pictures that people had were absolutely mind blowing. I have no idea how they got them. Um, and there was one woman, I really, I, I have to track her down. And I think I have an idea of how, but she had the most incredible fairy photos from Lilydale. I mean, they were really unbelievable, like uh, astounding. Um, so yeah, that's interesting. So in your uh, observation, have you noticed that the people who seem to get the best spirit photos and spirit electronic voice phenomenon are, are the ones that do move more into a space of trust? Oh yeah, it's absolutely um, a space Is of there, trust. There's a correlation there. Um, it's all in the, the spirit of play and fun and yeah. trust and yes. uh, camaraderie, rapport, or, you know, like um, also if everybody is in this belief state that we can go and we can see fairies, that those are the people who are more apt to have that experience. So, you know, it's, it's believing what is possible. Also, you know, it, it I mean, that's what a circle is, you know, a mediumship circle. It's like, you're all sitting together. You're melding your consciousness. You're, you're putting your, 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 your spirit too is, is merging and blending and yeah. with, the, with an intention and intention is everything. Yeah. And so it also play and fun and laughing. Um, you'll hear that a lot of when you're, uh, people who suggest about physical mediumship you know that's why people sing or tell jokes or like try to make it raise not so stuffy raise a vibration and bring people together yes and so those of you who are, who are students in my circles you you're like yes this is what willa tells us <laughs> this is, go ahead and have fun have trust and more will come to you when you're in that right intention and right practice and keeping it in that sacred joy I think that yeah. those are important elements for all yeah. of us. Yeah. And as I move forward with my own work, I find it more important to only try to work with people that I do trust. And I know that's hard because you also have to be open to meeting new people too. And, but like-minded people, as people who have the same intentions as you do, mm -hmm. um, that's really important. And for those of you who are, who are this, these concepts are new to, it's, uh, I don't feel that Shannon and I are, are trying to encourage you to go and, and uh, do this necessarily, uh, but it, it's something that you would want to approach with that kind of love and joy and that set intention. None of this is for dark purpose. None of this is for any of that kind of um, uh, low vibration thinking. And so those, I, I always try to encourage people to keep it in the highest and best if they're going to venture into this particular world. Yeah, that's some of the criticism, right? With some of the paranormal investigations, you know, going to a haunted house or something really negative happened. Mm -hmm. um, also, I've heard a lot about some EVP practitioners who are just listening to these negative sounds or scary sounds over and over and over again, like, that's where spiritualism really comes in and can kind of lend a hand to these types of practices because, yes. uh, and I know that there is a lot of debate about whether, I, like, what do you think, Willa, about like things like rescue circles? Or I, I was just talking to a medium, yes, the other day who she said she knows this medium is just constantly doing all these rescue circles and it seems very 
very dark and very scary. And I said, well, I, I don't know a lot of people who are seeking that out. I don't know how necessary it is. I mean, what are your thoughts as a working medium? As a working medium, that's, that's uh, really not necessary. I, I think that people can uh, choose what channel they would like to be on. And sometimes what they're connecting with is residual energy. It is not the energy of the moment, of the right. true moment. Like something- That's the other thing to keep in mind is like, that the, it's, uh, you, the angels gather in around a person when they pass. No one dies alone. <laughs> so it's just, uh, you know, it, consciousness is important and they do uh, learn and grow and spiritual progression is eternal and infinite. And you're right. That's where spiritualism really starts to take hold within a person when they realize that they don't have to worry about those elements, that right. it, it's all taken care of. There's you, you have to let that be on, on that good automatic pilot when it comes to, to the good and that, you can run into the resi the residual energy that's uh, in a place, uh, it's in a, in a space or in a person's consciousness, right? Right, like a lot of, you know, a good way to discuss residual energy is with the concept of the Akashic records. Yes, yes. Which is this idea that everything that's ever happened, every intention, every thought, every emotion, every action, is recorded on the astral plane mm -hmm. and and it, it exists on this akashic record and i was trying to explain um in the book i do talk about this also that the a ghost when you think about okay what are the classic ghost stories it's the same woman in the same dress she walks down the same hallway <laughs> ad nauseum for yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah and that's more like a recording or something stock or it 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 is kind of like a videotape replaying and it's not yeah. about um consciousness or in, an intelligence speaking that's the difference between ghost and spirits yeah. like do you find it i've i've met mediums who say well i don't care if people call them ghosts or spirits and other mediums who say no a ghost is something like an like a a residue from the akashic and a spirit is intelligent and you're communicating with this intelligence i i would say that that's a it's a simplified way of, of looking at it. Yes, that, that's a good rule of thumb for, for folks to understand the difference about this. And that most spiritualists are not into spook and boo. <laughs> this idea of the scare stuff that goes on. And um, I don't have fear about spirit uh, in all these decades. It's been very productive and, and useful. And, and while I can sense the space and energy that has gone before, that is what's termed psychometry when you can feel the energy of of a space of an object of of uh, of a person and so that is the the, the distinction spirit of uh, a lot of times if if they're coming around and it used to be a place they lived they're just visiting you know that was their place that, that was their stomping ground they're coming in to visit especially if people are changing the house and and they're not there to invade your privacy. They're not there. Sometimes they're just like, you know, I, I really like this. Or, hey, did you know that if you knock this wall out, you're going to find this thing I stashed there? Like, it's that kind of an energy. And it, it's, people have to know that there's not evil intent. It wouldn't be allowed. I mean, we have to have our healthy thoughts and healthy boundaries energetically with people and that's an important aspect of this. So if you're you're going to have uh, ITC happen, make sure you're setting that intention, that sacred intention. Absolutely. I, I I would suggest opening and closing it like just like you do a regular circle. You would yes. you would use your your spiritual hygiene in the way that you would use in any other type of a sitting. And um Janet Nohavik used to say um you know the 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 wonderful medium who has recently passed, she would say, don't go opening doors if you're not ready to, you, you know, that you're scared of, you know, That's don't right. go opening. If you're afraid of it, don't go opening doors to other realms. Don't even mm. do these practices. Um, you know, sometimes though, these, pra like with my friend Donna, it she wasn't seeking it. It happened to her. 
So that's why I do think spiritualists should engage with technology so they can help people who have these types of experiences. Absolutely. And they, can, they can help guide them to the, the, the healing intention that is core to spiritualism. Yes. Um, so I, they, so I do, they do think, have to reframe their thinking about things. That's right. And it deeply attaches to spiritualist history. So I do think if spiritualism is going to evolve and, and be in, in the world as this necessary force, which I believe that it is, um, I do think there should be an awareness. This is just my two cents, but you know, because people are having these types of experience and they need guidance. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, clients come right regularly with these events mm -hmm. and it's by and large, they know that it's not scary by and large. They're just like, that was so awesome that I heard from my mom. That was so great that my aunt that I, that was like my second mom uh, is showing up for me in this way. This is, you know, they, they know how to take it the right way by and large. And it's something that they, they can see, it's almost like, I call it spirit texting in the sense that sometimes you can feel them think talking with you and they're just like, hey, I'm just thinking about you. I love you so much. And it's not like earth shattering communications. Think about how much, you know, you, you don't have earth shattering communications with most of your people anyway. Yeah. You know, it's, it's just, hey, I'm thinking about you. Hey, you know, I got this, this sweater for you and I want to make sure I drop it off. It's just kind of, <laughs> it's people have to understand that it, it, it's uh normal everyday stuff that most people in spirit care about us still on those yeah. Deep levels yeah I just um I heard I've heard also too about people you know through internet searches feel felt like they're being getting signs from their deceased loved point. ones or mm -hmm. um even captchas or you know uh, you, you know those little codes that appear like coming up with a message and you know true. so so you know there are synchronicities that start to align people uh, when they're on a spiritual uh, a conscious spiritual journey with this and yeah. it is something where they can feel led by spirit now, is there a difference between algorithms playing with you and your phone listening to you? Absolutely. So I would say be a healthy skeptic when it comes to those things. But it it is a, a fascinating thing that over the years, people have, let's say they, they found the ways they found me. Some people have had dreams. They were told by spirit that they needed to talk to a, a, a medium named Willa and they never heard the name Willa before. And then they do the Google search, Willa and medium, and they found me kind of thing and they're like oh my gosh it's true and so they were able to use technology to find me but they're jogged by spirit and I've also had where they were like I have no idea why but you popped up and I was like I hadn't been searching for mediums I hadn't been searching for any of these things and um, my mama just passed and I was like what on earth why would this it's not like I pay for ads I don't do any of that kind of stuff yeah. <laughs> you know so I was like, for that, for that to pop up for them and they hadn't been following me and, and they don't know anybody else that it, it had had contact with me. And so it does happen in those ways. Very cool. Yeah, no, it's, <laughs> um, yeah, it's just like another aspect of the world to pay attention to and, um, to have, uh, yeah, yeah. Like to be in collaboration with the universe. It's just another way um, to do so. Yeah. And I love that. That's, that's mostly people ask me like, oh, are you looking for proof? And it's like with photography, it's not, you know, it's a tricky medium, you know, quote unquote. Uh -huh. Yeah. yeah. There's, <laughs> uh, but what I love is the synchronicities. Those are the most, um, the ones that resonate most strongly with me. Like the book ends with a really, with my most powerful photographic synchronicity, where I took a photo of a man in trance and it looks exactly like the card of Azit of his great grandfather. And so I'm not, it, it's, it's a testimonial of sorts, but it's not, I'm not offering it as proof. I'm offering it as like, like a question or an invitation to think, or an invitation to uh, think about the world in this sort of way, think about technology and art and photography and this, uh, as this type of, um, metaphysical device yeah and it's it's a good way for them to start to understand their profound connection with 
the universe, with all it is, and with that collaboration of love and light that is going on. And uh, uh, another thought I was having when it comes to photography, photography, I feel uh, spirit really likes to play with the light. Spirit is of the light. So I know initially sometimes with photography, uh, spirit was able to play with it because of the light and because of, of, of the glass and because of, because they used to have it on glass instead. Like yeah. It, that it, yeah. it was something that they, the transparency and the, uh, the chemo, the chemistry as well. Yeah, because I, we forget that photography, really the raw materials of photography are light and time. Yeah. What could be more mysterious or more apt to a uh, metaphysical influence? We don't even understand light, really. I mean, there, light is a mystery. Mm -hmm. um, time, space time is a mystery. Uh, every single photograph in and of itself is spirit photography because you are holding something that is no longer there. The second you take it, it's gone. So um, I really do like thinking of photography in this way. And I think a lot of people, even the most pragmatic materialists are drawn to photography because of its magic, you know, it, um, it, and even the, you know, the dark room chemistry. Now we're in these digital dark rooms, but still it, it's still you're using light and time and you're capturing something that is no longer the second you you catch it it's gone yeah and i i remember i was reading a book recently about when photography started to come out and uh, artists said well that's not good art that's horrible they they said you know especially because they came off of the pre raphaelites and and, uh, you know, they were like, even with impressionism, that's still not going to be uh, as, you know, photography is still not going to be as good. And what they realized was that the technology was in, in essence, its own brushstroke. Yeah. And, um, you know, this automatic art, this idea of automation, which plays into all spiritualist art too, this art not made of human hands, art, mm -hmm. you know, that's photography. Photography is an automatic art. And photography did, that's why it's kind of an exciting time for thinking about photography in this way, because uh, photographic uh, artists or people who were fans of photography, they spent a lot of time trying to prove to the art world that it was a worthy art. So mm -hmm. there was this big competition with painting and finally in the 80s and the 90s, galleries and uh, museums started to collect photography in the way that you would collect painting. And now it's accepted some of the most expensive art in the world are is photo, like made by famous photographers. And so now that that whole conversation is over, we can relook at photography's magic or things that are maybe a little bit spookier or metaphysical about photography. We can go back and ask these initial questions again because it's already proved itself as an art. So we don't yeah. it can be it can be what it is, which is something very unique and very distinctive. Beautiful. And I was I was just wondering, because you know, I do have the aura class this Saturday that I'll be teaching. And it, it, in terms of aura photography as it plays into ICT ITC, do you have any thoughts about that? Well, I love so mostly when we think of aura photography, you think of those color photos, you know, with the big beautiful fields of color over the people. That mm -hmm. is a, a device invented by a man named Guy Coggins. Um, called the, the, I think it's called the orograph machine, but you basically, it's a biofeedback mechanism. You're putting your hands into a device and the device is reading your body to create the color that's, that is then added to the photograph. So it's, it's kind of like um, a sandwiched image, but it's using your actual biofeedback. And unfortunately, those cameras are incredibly expensive. Uh, the, the the original Polaroid ones are like ten thousand dollars. Now you can you can buy uh, ones that are slightly cheaper that are digital. I actually approve. I, I actually um, prefer the ones that are the done on Polaroid. Mm -hmm. So you, I don't know if you ever had an aura photograph, but if, if you go to New York City, there's a place called Magic Jewelry in Chinatown where you can get it. A lot of times at psychic fairs, they'll have them. I highly recommend them. It's they're beautiful pictures and it's really fun. And usually the practitioner who's doing the picture will then give you a reading based on your color. 
Um, there's some artists who use that device as well. And it can um, shift. It can, and the aura can show with other living things too, with plants and animals, not just humans. But I think it's a, a good point for people to understand that when it comes to your aura, that's you, that's your own soul be showing up in that photograph. That's how yeah. your own soul is emanating with energy. So orb photography is the soul of the of the spirits that are are coming forward. In that photography and that is a is an important thing to know that we're talking about yes other people being souls but you being a soul and how your light emanates yes because we're spirits too we're just yeah. you know we're still wearing our skins or you know <laughs> the physical body layered with the many spiritual bodies that exist yes. within us yeah so, oh, that's beautiful. Any last thoughts before we close for your day? I know time's gone so fast. It's been great. great um, yeah, no, just if you are interested, um, there's a ton of resources, but also my book, I do talk a lot about all of these things and I have a bibliography in the back of it that would be helpful to anybody interested in pursuing it further. There's a lot of historical images as well as my own pictures in the book. Yes, it really is a great book. And uh, thank you for coming on today to talk about instrumental transcommunication, uh, the elements of especially focusing on electronic voice phenomenon and uh, spirit photography. Those are our main elements. And, and also you know, the electricity and how that is used to uh, further spirit communication. So these are all aspects. Uh, so I encourage you, uh, if you're just uh, catching the tail end of this, go back and watch this video again so that you can uh, learn more from, from this discussion we've had with Shannon Taggart. Thank you so much for being on the show today. And I encourage people to check, check out shannontaggart.com if you want more information about her book, Seance, and also upcoming things that she'll be doing for Lilydale. The Lilydale Symposium is going to be two days this summer, right? Yes. Yes. For, so D July 28th and 29th. Oh, and there'll be an opening event on the 27th in the evening. So mm -hmm. um, I have a mailing list. If you want to hear more, please sign up for my mailing list. I should have an announcement very soon. Excellent. So mark your calendars now for July 27th, 28th for here in Lilydale uh, so that you can get the, the full flavor of that lecture series. And uh, I'm glad that you're putting that together. You've been uh, such a, a wonderful uh, addition to the program over the years. And thank we can't you. thank you enough for doing what you're doing to support Lilydale and also spiritualism. All right, thank if anybody's you. interested in the aura class, check out my website, willowwhite.com because it's this Saturday and you don't want to miss it. Yeah, that's right, awesome. Everyone. We'll see you next week. I'm going to have uh, as my special guest, Celeste Elliott, we're going to be talking about building your spiritual foundation. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Shannon. Thank you. Day. Thank you, Willa. <laughs>